Shalom, this is Ahava. I'm with the Jewish Mason Jar, and um, i am decided to start videoing myself and recommending some books for children that are Jewish or who are learning about Judaism. And um, the first recommendation is um, if you go to Art Scroll, the website, they have children's books there, and some of which are called uh, Midos books, and it's a little symbol here on the back you can see, and on the front corner, and um, Midos is about building your character and there's quite a few different character building storybooks. Um, one of the recommended ones is um, by the author Yaffa Gans, which is really great author in Jewish literature and um, my girls just love this book. Um, this one is about Chesed and that's uh, loving kindness, and um, it's just a really sweet book. But there's a lot of um, wonderful illustrations, and as you can see, there's a lot of reading. So it's full of good, um, good storyline. You know, good teaching about how to treat each other as in the family and um, it's just really special this one here but Yaffa Gantz anything by Yaffa Gantz is wonderful and so this one right here is called a day full of mitzvot sometimes people say mitzvot it depends on your um, if you're Ashkenazi or Sephardic. So um, this one, of course, Art Scroll is probably going to be always with the Ashkenaz um, wording. So I'm going to read a little bit. I'm not going to read it all. But uh, I thought this was a good time to show just like, this one's cute because it's a play on words. You know, it's kind of poetic and um, the pictures are just just really fanciful. The, the kids would love it. So uh, I'll start off with saying, my name is Moshe and my name is Miri. Look at our faces, so bright and so cheery. Cause as we run and jump and play, we're doing mitzvot every day. And mitzvot are good deeds. Just adding in that, <laughs> what that means. Bright and early, it's time to start. I wind my tefillin near my heart. I put my talis on and then I'm ready to daven to Hashem. And as you can see, there is a lot of words in here that children can learn if they don't already know. Daven means pray. And tefillin and talis or talit you see them wrapping around their arm and their head. Roll the clay smooth all around. Now make a hole and press it down. Shape it well until it's done. Making candles is so much fun. Now for the candles, I'll take two, make them white the whole way through. When Shabbos comes, they'll shine so bright, they'll fill the house with Shabbos light. Really beautiful picture here. Their candles being lit for Shabbos. In the month of Elul, the shofar we blow, and when we hear it, we all know. Rosh Hashanah will soon be here. Time to daven for a sweet new year. And we just went through Rosh, 
Shoshana this past weekend. And we're learning about, too, Elul is an, a month in the Hebrew calendar, and it's, it's if children ask, you could do a whole little teaching on the months of the Hebrew calendar. Yom Kippur is over, no time to play, let's build our sukkah right away. We make the walls four or three, then put on schach so carefully. We want our S-Rog very clean, kind of yellow and kind of green. We're not through it yet, there's more to test because our S-Rog must be the best. And you can see, this is a really nice illustration of them looking it over carefully. And that's coming up soon, Sukkot, or Sukkot, Sukkos. And um, I'm gonna stop there with that, but this is the one, it goes on and on about all the different holidays, including including Purim and uh, Hanukkah. Uh, the last thing I'm going to recommend is if you haven't received PJ Library books, um, there's a little, this is how it looks here, but if you go online and you go to PJ Library, um, you can get free books come right to your door. So. Uh, don't miss out. This is one of the last ones they sent me was a Yom Kippur story, which is coming up here. And um, if you haven't done a Tashlik service, which is when you throw bread in the water and you apologize to Hashem for things that um, through the year that you regret doing. Um, it's kind of on the same lines. This book would go very well with with that as well. And this is just a wonderful book. I can't wait to share this one with you. Um, it's called The Hardest Word. And as you can see, this funny bird is all worthwhile watching in throughout this book. Beautiful illustrations. Beautiful story. Um... If your children like fantasy, they would like this a lot. Um, this is the first page. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. So this one I would really like to read through all the way. A long, long time ago, the world had many large and fabulous creatures. One of those creatures was a gigantic yellow bird with dark red wings and a purple forehead. The ziz was so huge that when he spread out his wings, he blocked the sun as if he were a dark rain cloud. Every time he flew over a town, all the mothers would call to their children, Come inside quickly before it rains! He loved children and didn't want to spoil their playtime. So the ziz started flying around at night when no one would notice that he made the sky dark with his gigantic wings. That worked time fine for a while. Then one night, the big ziz flew too high and he bumped into a star. Sizzle, snap, pop, bang. The star fell out of the sky and down to earth. It burned a big hole in the ground. Uh-oh. The next morning, when the ziz saw the big hole, he was worried. What can I do to cover this hole? He asked himself. He thought about it for a while and came up with an idea. 
he stretched out his huge wings and went back up into the sky. This time, he knocked down a cloud. Plop! The cloud was full of rain. And it filled the big hole with water. Now the big hole was a lovely pond, perfect for swimming. All the children came running to the pond, screaming with delight. It was a hot, sunny day, and they had a wonderful time splashing and playing in the water. That mistake is all fixed, the Ziz smiled. One day, however, the Ziz made a mistake he could not fix. It was the week before Yom Kippur. He was flying along, not watching where he was going, and he flew smack into the tallest pine tree in the world. Boom! The tree fell over and knocked over another tree. That tree knocked down another tree, and that tree fell in the vegetable garden behind the synagogue. Smash, squash, whoops. Oh no. This is covered his eyes with his big wings. Not the vegetable garden. It belongs to the children. The Ziz uncovered his eyes to look at the damage, the tomatoes, the corn, the pumpkins, the beans, the gourds, the squash, all the vegetables the children had worked so hard to plant were smashed to bits. I can't knock down a cloud and fix this, the Ziz cried. The Ziz flew home and sat in his own garden to think. He had watched the children plant their vegetable garden every year. They harvested the fruits to decorate their sukkah. What would the children do this year? The Ziz spread out his big wings and flew off to have a chat with God. The Ziz had a special place where he liked to talk to God. It was Mount Sinai. The Ziz was so huge that when he stood on Mount Sinai, his purple feathered head reached right up into heaven. Ooh, look at him flying down. Ooh, there he is, up in the sky. What have you done this time? God asked as soon as he saw the Ziz. This was not the first time the Ziz had come to Mount Sinai after making a mistake. I knocked over a big tree and knocked over another tree. That tree smashed a vegetable garden. The children's garden? God had questioned. Yes, the Ziz admitted, hanging his head. That's a problem, God said. I can't knock down a cloud and make this better. No, you can't, God agreed. What should I do? I want you to do something for me, God said. Anything, this is promised. I want you to search the earth and bring back the hardest word. The hardest word, this is questioned. Yes, God answered. Now go. And the Ziz stretched his big wings and went off to search. He flew over mountains. He flew over trees. He flew over valleys. He flew over seas. Flap, flap. I'm the biggest bird. Flap, flap. Searching for the hardest word. After searching the whole day, the Ziz stopped to rest at the edge of a forest. In a little house nearby, he heard a mother and child arguing. I don't want to go to bed, the little boy said. You need your rest, the mother said. I'm not tired, the little boy cried. Good night, the mother said firmly, closing the door. That's it. Ziz flapped his wings, 
the hardest word I found it. And Ziz flew as fast as he could to Mount Sinai. With great excitement, he put his bird feet down on the top and poked his purple feathered head up into heaven. I found it! I found the hardest word! What is it? God asked. It's good night. Every child hates that word. Ziz did a dance right on top of Mount Sinai. He loved being right. Well, good night is a hard word for children, God agreed. I knew it! I knew it! Ziz danced. But there is another word even harder, God said. There is? God declared. There is! Go and find it. So the Ziz spread out his mighty wings and went off to search. He flew over mountains, he flew over trees, he flew over valleys, he flew over seas. Flap, flap, I'm the biggest bird. Flap, flap, searching for the hardest word. After searching all day, Ziz stopped at a big feast on the grounds of a castle. He listened. With so many people talking, he felt sure someone would say the hardest word. I'm hungry, a little girl said to her mother. May I have some piscetti? Please? The mother smiled. Oh, you want spaghetti. That's it, Ziz said. I've got it now. He spread out his great big wings and flew back to Mount Sinai. He planted his bird feet on the mountaintop and poked his purple feathered head into heaven. I know the hardest word, he sang. What is it? God asked. It's spaghetti! Ziz hopped up and down on one foot. Standing still was hard, especially when he was excited. Spaghetti is a hard word to say, God agreed. Didn't I tell you? Ziz hopped some more. But... There is another word even harder, God said. There is? Ziz slumped over, disappointed. There is, God declared. Go out and find it. Ziz stretched his big wings and went back out to search. He flew over mountains. He flew over trees. He flew over valleys. He flew over seas. Flap, flap, and I'm the biggest bird. Flap, flap, searching for the hardest word. The Ziz searched for three more days. He brought back lots of words to Mount Sinai. Words like rock, rhinoceros, Ooh. ridiculous, oh my, and rumpelstiltskin. Each time God sent the Ziz back out to find another word. Whew. By the evening of Yom Kippur, the Ziz had brought over 100 words to Mount Sinai. God had not accepted any of them. The Ziz was discouraged. He had tried and tried. He flew back to Mount Sinai to have one more discussion with God. What word did you bring this time? God asked. No word. The Ziz said quietly. No word, God asked. No, the Ziz said sadly. I've come to say, I'm sorry. I can't find the hardest word. You can't, God asked. No, the Ziz shook his head. I'm sorry. You're sorry, God asked. Yes, the Ziz nodded his big purple head. I'm sorry. Good job, God said. You found the hardest word. I did? Now the Ziz was confused. Yes, God said, the hardest word is sorry. While all the words you brought me were hard, sorry is the hardest. I always say I'm sorry on Yom Kippur, the Ziz said. Well, you should say it other times too, God answered. Like when I smashed the garden, Ziz asked. That's right, God said. 
The Ziz thanked God and pulled his purple feathered head out of heaven. Then he spread out his great big wings and flew back to the children's garden. On the way, he stopped at his own garden and gathered a big basket of fruits and vegetables for the children. It was time to say the hardest word. The end. Thank you for joining me in reading the hardest word. And stay tuned for other readings and recommendations from the Jewish Mason Jar. Bye. Shalom, shalom.